today I wanted to talk a little bit more about studying languages. Now, I already did a video on this topic a while back. I'll link it here if you haven't seen it yet. As far as the feedback from you guys goes, I got a lot of really positive responses on that video and so I think there's maybe some helpful things in there for you as well. The video I did back then was mainly about how to become fluent in a language once you've already reached a certain level. So basically just taking you from being good to being amazing. But today I want to talk more about how to like facilitate learning languages in the beginning. So when you don't know a lot yet, just some study tips and things you can do to help you along with that. As some of you might know, I currently study Japanology at university and in the process of that I obviously have to learn Japanese as well. So most of these things will be applicable to all languages but some might just be more specific for Japanese because yeah, you also need to learn the writing and so obviously that's a bit trickier than say learning French or learning Spanish. So before I get started, let me just say I'm really sorry if the lighting changes in this video or gets kind of weird but the weather is so strange today, like it's been raining and stormy and now it's sunny again so I'm not really sure what to expect. Um, but yeah, I apologize for that in advance. Anyway, let's get started. So one of the first things you're going to need to learn in any language is obviously the vocabulary and in my opinion that is the biggest pain in the ass because it is the most boring activity ever. Unfortunately, it is very very necessary and so, you know, I've been thinking about just ways to make it kind of more exciting maybe and just a little less dull. And one thing that helps me a lot instead of just sitting down and literally reading the words and then reading it since later over and over again until you remember it is I get these guys just little colorful post-it notes and what I do is I write down the in my case Japanese word on a post-it and then I stick it to the thing that it means and so whenever I use that certain thing I read the Japanese word for it and I automatically associate them in my head and that way I repeat them over and over again without actually having to sit down and study. Now obviously this doesn't work with all vocabulary because especially once you reach a certain stage or like really quickly actually you start learning vocabulary that are kind of more abstract things and not just objects that you have around your house but I think that especially in the beginning it helps a lot. I just remember last semester when I started out I had stickers all over my apartment and also back at home at my parents house my room was full of just stickers uh, with Japanese words and I can honestly say that it helped me a lot and it was way less boring than sitting down and studying them like for real my next tip would be to go find a pen pal now you can actually do this pretty early on in your studies because you know one of the first things you pretty much learn in any language if you take classes or even if you teach yourself is usually how to introduce yourself, how to talk about yourself, about things you like, things you dislike, what you do, kind of if you go to a school, if you go to university and all that kind of good stuff. And that is usually what you will be talking about with a pen pal at first as well because obviously you need to introduce yourself. It's just a really simple thing that you can do and you can pretty much do with whatever language you want and it's incredibly helpful. I will link the site that I'm using to find Japanese pen pals down below but I actually think that you can find um, language exchange partners for other languages on there as well and if you can't just type into Google like French English language exchange or Spanish English language exchange whatever language you're searching for I'm sure there will be a ton of people who want to learn your language uh, in exchange and so yeah you just write back and forth and the way you do it is pretty much up to you I have a couple people that I write with and they all have different styles one just writes in uh, English to me and I reply in Japanese and then she corrects my my letter and I correct hers another guy I write with he um, always sends me a text written both in Japanese and English so I have both versions there and I can kind of read them and if I don't quite understand the Japanese one I can refer to the English one and vice versa so then I obviously reply with uh, two versions of my text as well and I think that's incredibly helpful both versions work really well so just go ahead and you know find whatever works for you and obviously your language partner but I can promise you despite the fact that it might be a lot of work especially if you write letters in a different script <laughs> like I have to um, 
it is a lot of work. It is. I sometimes sit there for like two hours just writing one text or trying to translate his one text um, because I can't read all of the kanji yet and he insists on using them without giving me the furigana for it, but it's okay. I'm very grateful that I get the chance to exchange and kind of improve my Japanese in the first place, so I'm not complaining. As I said, I would recommend doing this at pretty much any level because you learn so much so so much by just writing letters with someone who's a native speaker it's basically like the the first step to actually talking to a native speaker because you can take your time you can sit down you can even use a dictionary you can use whatever you like you can work on your text you can work on what you want to write and you don't have to make any spur of the moment decisions you don't have to like think and kind of stress yourself out as you would probably in a situation where you tried to apply what you learned in a language in like a native speaker situation so I think it's incredibly helpful and I would recommend doing this to absolutely everyone it's also just super interesting to talk to someone from a different country because obviously there are cultural differences and they always tell me about like events and, and kind of you know festivities that are happening in Japan at the moment that maybe I haven't heard of before and so yeah it's just incredibly interesting and you'll learn a ton I would actually recommend um, keeping a separate like vocabulary journal maybe of words that you keep using in like letters and stuff and maybe even if you you know learn Japanese or another language where it is a different scripture trying to write down um, the signs like the kanji in my case and just keeping them there in this one place and also little grammar things sometimes I have to look up grammar things because I don't know how to phrase things a certain way so just google it and kind of try to quickly uh, give myself the information I need and then I just write down really quickly despite the fact that I don't yet need it in class just so I know like okay this is the I don't know this and that form and you can use it for this case and for that and just so I have it there and in case I need it again I can refer back to it and I don't have to look all over again for you know the phrase or the grammatical structure another thing that is really helpful to me is to watch movies or in my case anime with subtitles. Despite the fact that I'm not actually a big fan of anime except for Detective Conan which is my jam, like literally, um, I kind of make myself watch them every now and again just so I can hear some native Japanese being spoken and just so I can kind of at least try to apply what I've learned in class. Obviously I don't understand much of anything <laughs> but it still helps you and it's just a major boost for your confidence as well if you start noticing more and more things and you start hearing words or phrases and or grammatical structures and you're like oh my god I know what this means because despite the fact that maybe you don't recognize a lot you still understand more than maybe you would have two months ago and that's just an amazing feeling I have found that this is also a really helpful thing to do when you're preparing for an oral exam I had an oral examination two months ago and it was really stressful for me so I needed to do a Jiko Shokai, which is a self-presentation. Basically, I just needed to talk about myself, which wasn't too hard. And after I had everything prepared and like studied all the vocab and done all that stuff, pretty much all I did to prepare is listen to anime in Japanese a lot. Now, I didn't even properly watch it. I didn't even read the subtitles. I didn't really pay very close attention. I like put it on while I was doing stuff around the house or like doing the dishes, whatever. I just wanted to kind of have that background noise in Japanese. And I'm not sure that this is like a scientific thing, but I have noticed that for some reason when I listen to Japanese, even if I don't understand it, my brain tries to understand it and thereby accesses that part of my memory or that part of my brain that is like in control of the languages. Again, I have no idea if that's just science that I made up or if it's actually true, but I feel like that's how it works. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. I feel like when before an exam, kind of I recall that language that I've already learned into the front of my brain. It is right there and way easier to access it than if I hadn't done it. And then the last tip I have for you is pretty much specific to Japanese or any language where I need to learn the writing as well. And it's to make flashcards and make a lot of them. Um, I know that you can actually buy the finished flashcards for the kanji and it'll like give you a bunch of information on them like is it a fire kanji, is it a water kanji? I to this day don't know what that means or if it has something to do with the radicals. 
no idea. But personally, I feel like it works so much better if you make your own. I'm sure you all know how flashcards as a concept work. Basically, you just draw the kanji on one side and please ignore my terrible kanji writing skills. My teacher always corrects me because I don't do it very neatly. And then at the back, I just write the onyomi and the kunyomi. Can you, can you see this? These are the ones that we need to be able to recognize, so we don't yet need to write them. And we need to know a, a Chinese and a Japanese meaning as well as the translations to both. And so that's what I write down here. I know that there's like a bunch more meanings and readings. Luckily, we need to only focus on a couple. Now, I actually don't have a big problem with studying kanji. I find it really easy, like I can remember them really well and I can do a lot at one time. Um, I can do up to like 50 a day and then still remember them the next day and it's really helpful if you like need to kind of cram before a test. But disclaimer, that's not how everybody's brain works. So if you need to learn kanji, maybe try to figure out if, you, if it like comes easy to you or if you have to take a lot of time because, you know, Everybody's brain works differently and I'm just one of the lucky people who can remember kanji really easily Which is definitely helpful, but then if I don't do anything like for the February holidays I didn't look at one kanji and after that I'd forgotten like half of them So, you know, maybe the people who take more time actually remember them for longer as I said before I would just recommend making your own because there's also programs on the internet, I think one is called Anki that a lot of my friends use but I personally just prefer making them myself because in the process of making them I already have to draw them, I have to write the meanings down and that way I've already seen them once and they're not completely new to me and they're also just kind of more tangible and I like having that I like being able to take them with me and just having them in physical form I don't know why, it's just something that is like a big deal for me apparently I need, I can't study things off of computer screens, I just can't. And I also don't really want to spend a lot of money on them if I can just buy like a bunch of flashcards for like a buck and then cut them in half and get my lovely little flashcards myself. Because why? Why would I need to spend money on that? It's just a waste of money to be honest. So yeah, basically the way I do it is I keep it in like a big Ziploc bag because otherwise they're falling all over the place. I, as I said, add up to 50 new kanji every single day if I have like a lot to go through and I think I need to know about 300 in one month. So yeah, it's not, not at all much. And the way I do it basically is I look at five new cards at a time and I go through them and I try to find little kind of connections in the kanji itself that can kind of remind me of a meaning or of reading or whatever. And I will look at them and try to remember them and then I will put them, go through them again and then I'll put them to the side and then I'll take the next five and go through them. And when I'm done with those five, I'll mix them with the first five and go through everything. And that way I just kind of build my collection and go through everything every single time after I've added five more. And that way they're like really ingrained in my brain. At some point, however, you reach a level where the amount of kanji you already know reaches like, I don't even know, infinity. And so you have a huge pile of them. And then I kind of decide, okay, these I know so well already I can put them aside and not repeat them every single time and then those kind of become my sort of backup kanji so I'll put them aside and repeat them once a day but not every single time I add new kanji and then I just keep adding more kanji to my active pile and then add some more to my passive pile once I feel like I know them well enough it's really simple actually but it works super well for me so maybe it'll do some good for you as well okay so you guys that's it for my study tips video again if you want uh, more advanced information how to kind of reach fluency more easily I link the video down below so you can go and check it out I hope this was helpful to you and uh, leave any further questions you have down below and I will answer them for you have a lovely week I'm gonna see you soon bye because the spike oh my gosh I <laughs> I'm sorry it's so noisy um, because it's the wind like blowing into the thing and it's just so fucking noisy. It's been driving me crazy all day. Anyway. Because, oh my god, I'm so stupid and I'm spilling everything. Seriously, that was not very smart.